so you know after after playing that storyline out after when it did come to an end were you ready to leave <laughs> i i was so physically exhausted yeah that yes I, I was ready to leave i mean the funny thing is this wendy said to me uh you know sort of innuendos like i wish there was a way that we could not kill the character off but it would it would cheat the work that we had done so far sure the, of course. the character yeah. really had to die to, to tell the story the real way and we all knew that and so she had me slated for like coming back as a ghost for like two months oh man <laughs> and i i went into the office with her and i said i said wendy i love you and i love this opportunity and i love the storyline and i think we killed it me, no pun intended i we gave our all but i'm like i'm i'm exhausted you, we got to let the character go now and I said, sure. I need to go on vacation. I need to clear my head. I said, I'm going to get sick uh, myself if I continue sure. this too long. I need to shake free of it yeah. because I'm not, I'm not really dying and I'm not really sick. And if I keep this cathartically, I got I got to release this. And she, she, she had a meeting with the writers and they changed what they were going to do. Yeah. They, did a, they did two dream sequences and then the character was off till I came back like years later. I ended up doing like, seven, eight films, independent films. And uh, I did one with Antonio Sabato in Bulgaria playing his brother, ironically enough. Amazing, amazing. And I bounced around with a bunch of different stuff, but never a character with any significance, never a film with any significance. And so I had, um, I had started to transition with my career in when I was doing the soap opera, when I literally was like, I gotta have a, a break. I started promoting a nightclub that my father was hired to be the PR person for. I was like, let me just pick one night a week. I'll bring all my friends, I'll party, I'll get it out of my system so I can deal with the heavy drama on this on the sure. set. That turned into a second career for me. I ended yeah. up opening up like four or five restaurants, a nightclub, I had a private membership community. I was that guy for 20 years in LA, like right. shaping LA nightlife. Now, uh, was there a, was there a moment where you said, okay, I'm done. I love what I'm doing now, promoting clubs, doing restaurants. Like, was there ever a, a peaceful transition, if you will, to those two things? Or was it some, not something you thought about? Well, it, it, it happened naturally because of the way in which I got into it. Mm. So my dad had the sort of contract to do PR for that club. I needed a, a night that I could just clear my head. So yeah. being that I was already now a club promoter, and an actor, there wasn't the stigma of, oh, well, what, you don't want to act anymore? No, I was doing both. So in my right. head, I can do both. Why can't sure. I do both? Don't For tell sure. me I have to pick. And that's sort of how I went forward with everything was, no, I'm this and I'm that. And sure. I can be something else if I need to be too, you know? Right, of right. course. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you've never really had all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, right? No, I, as, no. as, as long as I've known you, you've always been yeah. doing something else, which yeah. is is awesome because it takes your mind off, you know, yeah. am I going to get hired or not? It doesn't matter. You're right. promoting clubs, you're starting businesses and, and, you know, right. making money that way. So it didn't really matter if yeah. you got hired again and, or not. And Steve, I'd have, I'd have guys, uh, you know, I'd have Michael Bay. I'd have, I'd have all these people coming to my venues and sitting at the table with me, wanting to meet the girls that I know and have drinks with me. So I'm like, <laughs> in a way I'm thinking, well, who knows? Maybe this guy will think of me in that. And it didn't work like that for me. Yeah. But I right. was that guy for all these people in the industry. Yeah. You know, in that sense, they would come have dinner with me. They would come to my club. They would do yeah. this, you, but it yeah. didn't go into the well, Mike, I know you're an actor. I got something for you. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't work. Yeah. You, you definitely were the godfather for a while. They're promoting clubs, dude. Holy yeah, love man. Yeah. What, and what I was, a I run. Too much fun doing what a, it was a, it was a crazy nightlife. That's for sure. Bradford. Yeah. Sorry. You missed it all. I, anyway, I missed it. Uh, well, it, it's funny. Cause I, I always talk what about a run. Like Here's the best part. There's a, used to be a club called bar one that Michael used to promote. And literally it was like, I don't know, quarter mile from my house. Uh Oh, yes. Uh Oh, is it? <laughs> there you go. That's all I'm going to say. It was that's amazing. The story. That's, <laughs> that's the story. The story. Uh -oh. That's, that's um, exactly right. you, uh -oh. you, you, you did damage. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. But um, I mean, Steve, you remember all every everyone who was running in this town came through those doors. So sure, you know, everyone did. When I yes. did, yeah. When I did inventing the Abbots, after that, Joaquin Phoenix was there. When Bar One became um, 
good bar. We right. got a name change ah. years later and I was the one running that. Yeah. You know, he was there, you know, I mean, so we always had like that celebrity sort of influence. So in a weird way, if the acting wasn't delivering with the roles that I wanted, I still felt included or involved, or there was still that level of excitement. So sure. I still felt like I was part well, and, of, the and it, of the community. And achievement and success and not just belonging too. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.